Five years ago, I founded and chaired the CBC's Emergency Task Force on Black Youth Suicide and Mental Health. Mental health emergencies and suicides among young black youth had been on the rise, but this troubling trend had gone mostly unnoticed outside of the mental health field. Steadily and quietly, our children were dying, succumbing to depression, anxiety, and loneliness. And so I and several of my colleagues who will speak here tonight came together to get to the bottom of this problem. We brought in experts, including psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, teachers and school administrators, and students to help us paint a picture of this problem. This picture was grim. Between 2007 and 2020, a black child died by suicide every three days. The suicide rate among black youth ages 10 to 17 increased by a staggering 144%. Among young children ages 5 to 12, black youth were twice as likely to die by suicide, and the suicide rate for teenage girls increased by almost 7% each year. These findings would make anyone sick to their stomach. It inspired the task force members to write the Pursuing Equity and Mental Health Act, which would surge funding to the National Institute of Health and the National Institute of Minority Health and health disparities, and to develop an outreach and education plan to reduce the stigma associated with mental health conditions and substance abuse. Now flash forward five years, and the devastating impact of COVID has brought this crisis to everyone's attention. The social isolation, the constant fear of getting sick, and watching loved ones die have taken an unparalleled toll on all of us. Our nation suffered a collective trauma made up of millions of individual crises. But the pandemic fell especially heavily on black women. The expectation of black women to be pillars of their families and communities combined with the greater likelihood of being essential workers increased the vulnerability to both physical and mental health problems. As a result, 50% of black women experienced elevated levels of depression and 20% reported experiencing severe psychological distress. While other groups rebounded steadily after the pandemic, unemployment among black women stayed high, even increasing at times when overall unemployment was falling. This persistent unemployment created additional stress on already struggling communities. It is our responsibility to ensure that overburdened communities, especially in impoverished urban and rural areas of the country, have access to mental health care. Since the task force was convened, we've addressed bits and pieces of this issue, like improving and simplifying the process of accessing the suicide crisis hotline by calling 988. But so much more work needs to be done. Our children have been given neither the tools to maintain their health nor the care that they need to cope. But it does not have to be this way. Children who have access to help can thrive. They've shown an ability to bounce back and become strong, happy and resilient, to be active and productive in their communities. We have the capacity to create the conditions in which all of our children have a shot at happy, fulfilling lives. So no matter your race, your background, or your gender, each one of us wants, no indeed we pray, for our children to grow up healthy. And we must have and we need our black women to be mentally and physically equipped to provide that growth that is so necessary. When we see them struggle, we struggle. When they're in pain, we feel that pain deeply. We know this to be true, Democrats, Republicans, and independence. It doesn't matter what your party affiliation is. And yet here we are, 52 months after the introduction of the Pursuing Equity and Mental Health Act and seven months after the introduction of the Youth Mental Health Research Act, bipartisan bills to get our children the care they so desperately need. And we still can't come together. Look around the country. People are fed up with this con Congress, the least productive Congress in decades. Surely we can come together for the sake of our children. I implore my colleagues to take this situation seriously, 
to put aside our differences and to show our children that we care and get them the help that they need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield.